how do you really feel? Yeah, don't be, don't be a slave to an illusion. Don't be a slave to an illusion. That's a phrase that just spontaneously came out of uh, my friend Nicholas's mouth as we were walking and talking in a video that I shot, I guess about two or three months ago now. Nicholas is an intellectual. He's, he's a writer and a poet, and he teaches French literature at a high-end school here in Bangkok. And Nicholas and I were talking about the expat life in general when he used that phrase. But I think it fits really well with what I'm talking about today, and that's the attitudes and expectations a lot of Western men have when they come to places like Thailand and the Philippines, Southeast Asia in general, looking for women. They often get more, or sometimes a lot less, than they bargained for. I had become quite happy, quite satisfied being a single guy until I arrived in, in Asia, in Singapore, and discovered that an old guy like me can still attract a beautiful young woman. And it, I guess, kind of resurrected my inner playboy. <laughs> and I had some fun with it. And I wound up in a relationship with a Filipina girl. Lovely. That was her name. Lovely, lovely. She and I dated for quite a while, and I was growing quite fond of her. When she had to leave Singapore and go back to the Philippines, I followed her. And I went to Occidental Negros. That's the same island that Dumaguete is on. Dumaguete is a well-known city because of the popular YouTubers there, and I'm presuming a lot of you watching this video have already heard about Dumaguete. Well, on the other side of that island is a city called Bacolod City, and that's where Lovely lived. And I spent weeks there, kind of testing out the waters, growing closer to Lovely, uh, yeah, it didn't work. I didn't like living in the Philippines, uh, not in the provinces anyway. And it was, you know, I, I don't want to knock a lifestyle or a way of life, but it just wasn't for me. I'm kind of a city boy. And, you know, the Philippines just wasn't working for me. I have to remember this was like 12 years ago, 12, 13. It was a long time ago. And it was really a third world country. It was hard for me to adapt to it. Uh, Lovely and I eventually went our separate ways. She's doing okay. She met a Brit guy, a banker for that matter, and she now lives in London. Uh, she got married and had a, had a baby with him. They seem to be doing okay. I mean, we don't talk a lot, but the last I heard, <laughs> she was doing just fine in London. A few weeks ago, I was back in the Philippines on the island of Negros, talking to Paul McGill. Many of, many of you know him, old dog, new tricks. And I was there to interview Paul for a topic unrelated to women. But Paul and I sat and talked for you know, about an hour and a half, a good 90 minutes. And off camera, we chatted about a lot of things. And, you know, we did talk about relationships. And one of the things that Paul has helped promote and create a little bit is an attraction to Dumaguete City uh, to foreigners who are, you know, looking looking for a Filipina bride. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing now, pal. <laughs> and it was kind of, a, you know, that's not what he set out to do. As a matter of fact, Paul was a little bit like me when he landed in Dumaguete. He was, uh, he was single on his own and intending to stay that way. He too ate of the lotus blossom, a phrase from an old expat here that I think has to do with meeting Asian women. <laughs> There are much annoy a lotus blossoms in the Philippines, but yeah, you get the idea. And he wound up uh, married to uh, to May, baby May, who uh, he seems quite happy with. One of the things that stuck out, stuck out for me in my conversation with Paul off camera is he kept referencing things that he wanted to do and for his wife. It was really, you know, quite charming, actually. This guy clearly loves his wife. He's happy and contented in his relationship. And he started putting that out on his video channel. And what's happened is a lot of people have headed to that part of the world to try to duplicate what Paul did. You need to be wary about that. 
I mean, sometimes th that mission has unintended consequences. <laughs> What happened with me is I wound up in Bangkok. Long story from Singapore to Philippines to Vietnam and about eight years ago I landed in Bangkok uh, more or less permanently and started a small business, again a yoga business, that was my, my gig, and I needed to hire a Thai lady to uh, be the front for that business. It's just kind of the way things work here without going into the details of it. And uh, that was Miss Buakau, and she and I uh, at first were uh, just in business together. She was my employee, basically. But slowly we grew together. What happened was COVID, the lockdowns, and all of that stress and angst that was present back in the spring of 2020 put us together in a set of circumstances that really drew us together. There's an old study about uh, the Love Bridge, is the name of the study, and it was a study done by some university. I'll link it in the description if you're interested in the details. And what they did is they had a, uh, a, an attractive young woman ask for directions on a low, kind of normal bridge, and then they had, had the woman do the same thing on a high, scary, bouncy kind of uh, uh, scary bridge. And she was asking directions from young men. They interviewed the young men afterwards, and the men on the high bridge, on the high, scary, dangerous bridge, tended to report that they believed the woman was flirting with them, more so than on the not scary lower bridge. And the conclusion from that study was danger or, or stress or anxiety creates an environment that can very often be misinterpreted as you know, a romantic connection. Now, I don't want to say that's exactly what happened with Boo, Cow, and I, but it fits. It kind of fits. We were thrown together in a difficult and anxiety-producing situation, and we took care of one another. Once that emergency ended, slowly over time, she and I grew apart. There's plenty of sort of details I could throw into that, but I'm not going to. That's basically what happened. That's, the, that's the, the macro view. That's the overview of what happened. And what that did is that put me back into the condition that I arrived in Asia in almost 14 years ago. I'm a single, healthy, adventurous man that's quite happy in my own skin and with my lifestyle. Do I like the ladies? Yeah, sure. Do I need them? No. As a matter of fact, I found that being in a, rela a relationship often interferes with some of the things that I want to do and accomplish. So I think that's the point of this video, is that don't be drawn into the illusion of this happy lifestyle that you may or may not find with some, some cute little Asian honey because, you know, you see others that have achieved that. And if you want to go for that, you know, fine. You know, Paul did it, he, he seems happy, and I know others that have. I know others who have done it, and it was a complete disaster. So what my suggestion is, is to do what I kind of inadvertently did. Get happy in your own skin. Become a comfortable human being in your own little bag of skin with a life that you're contented with without any partner. Makes you more attractive, by the way. <laughs> so I, I, I think that that's um, the solution to not being, uh, not being a slave to an illusion. Be true to what it is that you want and need for yourself as an individual. And that'll be, you know, a better path to happiness, you know, here in Asia or wherever it is that you, you are in the world. If you're still here listening to me ramble on, thanks for watching. I'll see you. I'll, I'll see you soon.